I'm currently here right now with uh, David Greenberg, who is an architect with, with uh, Two Sigma, and is also our forthcoming author of ours, uh, working on a book with us called uh, Building Applications on Mesos. Hey, David, how are you? Good, thanks. How are you, Brian? Yeah, doing well. Doing well. Um, yeah, I, I'm curious about your work, you know, with Two Sigma. You know, I thought, you know, I. I really curious to hear a little bit more about your role there, um, and as well as other projects you're working on. Yeah. yeah. I'd be curious to learn a little bit more. Yeah, so I guess, um, you know, at Two Sigma I do, um, over the past few years I've done a whole lot of things with with, um, with Mesos. I guess originally my, the, the sort of the, the mandate that I had was sort of to work on rebuilding the way that we do clusters. And so, um, and what I found was that Mesos is, is this really unique piece of software and that it allows you to both build um, your own kind of custom software on it, but also like leverage open source in a way that's just really hard otherwise. Yeah, no, yeah. and that's interesting. And I know with Mesos too, it, it, it works very well with other open source applications. Can you touch upon a little bit of those and kind of yeah, yeah. what that ecosystem's like and it, uh, is there uh, plans for expansion? Because with some it works right out right out of the box, I believe, right? Oh, sorry? With some some applications it works right out of the oh, box. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So I mean, so like already today, you know, there's support in Mesos for things like, um, you know, originally Mesos, Spark actually was a, was a Mesos application. And then oh. later on only did they add the standalone support. And besides that, you know, we've seen integration with things like Jenkins for automatically scaling workers. Yeah. We've seen um, support for Storm. There's right. um, there's like platforms that run on it. Even like Twitter's entire um, infrastructure is actually open sourced. It's called Aurora, and it runs as a Mesos application as well. Oh, that's pretty so, fascinating. Yeah, yeah. In the past, um, in the in the most recent release of Mesos, which came out just in the past few weeks, they actually added support for um, for di for Mesos managing disks. So now there's actually you can run things like databases like MySQL and Kafka and uh. you know um, Cassandra. Like you can even run those on just one piece of infrastructure to kind of span your entire you know. Everything that you need, you can run it by just by operating one Mesos cluster, one minute. which is you know really efficient. That's um, pretty interesting. Yeah. yeah. No, the applications of Mesos I think seem to be pretty broad, which is pretty nice. Yeah. You know, and another thing too, you know, as a, and I'm sure you get asked this a lot, and you're kind of touching upon it though. Yeah. You know, what exactly is Mesos at its core? If you had to sum it up or, or break it yeah. down into like a few yeah, yeah. <laughs> short sentences, what is it? So, so it's two things. Yeah. It's It's a. It's an. It's an execution platform, and it is a. Um, deployment platform. Okay. And so by execution platform, what I mean is it's a way to run jobs on a cluster. So think things like Hadoop or Storm or Spark, right? It's like you write a job and you want to run it across the cluster. And as a deployment platform, it's it's really, it's in many ways, it's really similar to like Ansible or Chef or Puppet. Okay. Um, the big difference is with Ansible, say, you run, you know, you run Ansible playbook or whatever right. and it like it sets up your machines and then it's done right. but with Mesos it's it's as if the Ansible playbook connected directly to all the machines okay. and could learn about the machines as their situation changed and so a Mesos framework not only can deploy stuff like like Aurora or Marathon would but it can also react to the changing conditions on the cluster oh that's pretty, so, that's pretty fascinating yeah, yeah it, no. it, it's almost it's a game changer in some ways because like it really means that you can build for the first time you can build a lot more um, smarts and automation because the hooks are there where the hooks just weren't there before oh that's real that's, that's that's pretty interesting. Yeah. Yeah, and I, and I know you know this afternoon you're giving a talk, you mm -hmm. know, on, on Mesos. Which I think it'd be pretty great. And as I mentioned, you know, you're working on a book, which I think is pretty fun. Yeah. But um, you, you, why should developers choose to work in Mesos? You know, what yeah. is it? You know, what does it offer over other, you know, similar types of products? And what yeah. is it that they really they, they draws them that should draw them in? Yeah. So, so I think really the thing about Mesos is. With Mesos, you only need to operate the cluster, and then every application can self-operate and self-monitor and self-heal. Okay. And this is something that, like, really, you know, the applications that are built on Mesos that people say, like, this is production ready, right. they really do self-heal. And so, oh. like, if you look at Twitter, they have tens of thousands of, of nodes in their clusters. Right. They only have three SREs operating all of Twitter. Wow. Like, that's crazy, you know? Like, yeah. most, most organizations at that size would have <laughs> hundreds or something, but they have three. Wow. And then everything else is just, you know, they can build self-healing automated systems um, to, you know, the frameworks themselves. The frameworks are like the applications that run on Mesos. Right. The frameworks, they can actually kind of, they know all the little tricks they need. You know, they can be like, oh, like this database knows that when it loses a node, it needs to like re-replicate. Right. But this like, you know, and then the, the web app framework knows that when it loses a node, it needs to change load balancer rules like for when it brings up the new, you know, instance. And so yeah. but it lets you lift those smarts out of, the, out of the need of the SREs to kind of deal with it. And so it means that like you can kind of, you can more easily silo groups, oh, which is okay. a good thing in some ways because 
you don't need your SREs to understand everything about your applications. They just need to understand Mesos. Gotcha. So, you know, gotcha. that's like, that's really great. Um, no, yeah, yeah, no. I can definitely see a lot of developers being really interested in that. And then we're, yeah, yeah. I'm hearing that on my end as well as I talk to a lot of people. So yeah. it's really great to hear. Yeah. And with the Docker integration in Mesos, you know, it's, um, that yeah. also is like, you know, so the, so the developer can just focus on how do I write my application in Docker. The SRE can focus how do I operate the Mesos cluster. And then the open source framework, you know, that can then just, hook up the Docker images and span them across the cluster. I mean, in some ways now, you know, Mesos is like, it's like a superset of the functionality of things like Docker Swarm or, you know, um, Yarn or all these things, right? It's, it's right. It kind of does everything. That's interesting. So, yeah. yeah, no. The future for Mesos, I think it's pretty great. So it's going to be yeah. great to see how things continue to develop and take on as more applications kind of can work on and be built on top of that. I think it'll be really great. Yeah. Really great. But, um, yeah, so, it's, I mean, you know, another thing I noticed, too, is that you like the program enclosure. You have other mm -hmm. interests. I'd be curious to hear, like, yeah. other fun things you like to do outside of the kind of the Mesos world that, yeah. and other areas and technologies that you're finding to be kind of really interesting out there right now. Yeah, so recently I've really been um, kind of trying to learn more about Rust. Um, yes. Because, you know, yeah. it just hit 1.0 and yeah. um, and the, the I so before before I was doing closure in Mesos and distributed systems I was doing a lot of like operating system driver development for like um, oh. in like high frequency trading and like you know really high performance stuff yeah. and so the idea of having some of the functional programming and like um, you know safety promises that I that I have from these high level languages yeah. and bring that to something where I can like really be you know squeezing every last ounce of performance out of the machine is something <laughs> that's like kind of it's, it's pretty exciting yeah. Um, so yeah no and I hear a lot about Rust too yeah. so and I know as it just hit 1.0 I think the future for that is is pretty great as well so yeah. um the chat it's uh, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's really exciting and um and actually I even think that um some of the things I'm, I'm looking at even now are now that now that Mesos has also released its persistent volumes feature with right. this, you know these database integration um, when you look at like you know um, the kind of the interaction of all these things it, it seems like there's there's even new spaces have now opened up where like before you know if you think about like you know, how does like, I don't know, Cassandra or, or React get sold? It's because it's easy to operate, you know, it's, it's not such a pain in the butt. But with Mesos, you can have incredibly hard to operate stuff, but you can write automatic ops for it. And so now you can build databases that have higher performance than ever before yeah. by automating all the operations. So you're not just selling, you know, or, or, or open sourcing just the database, yeah. but you're also open sourcing or selling the entire operations, you know, in software. And so like there's there's new new levels of performance I think are gonna you know be possible now. Be possible which is pretty with, cool. That seems pretty yeah. interesting. But um but yeah, well, well well thanks for chatting with me. I think that Definitely. You know, all this is really great and I think more people, you know, as Mesos continues to build Steam, I think will be really interested in wanting to learn more. And I think, you know, people can definitely catch your talk later and I think, you know, as the book continues to build and come together, I think it'd be a great resource for people looking to learn more. So yeah, yeah, definitely. It'd be really exciting. So um, yeah, well, 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 thanks for chatting and yeah, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll take it from there. Yeah, cool. thank you. Yeah. All right. All right.